Now the piece I'm talking about is The Last Judgment, sculpted by Gilza Burtis. Um, now to better understand this artwork, I want to take you back to the Romanesque period. Romanesque means descended from the Romans, so like the lifestyle, um, architecture, um, all that was kind of based off what the Romans did back in the past. During the 11th and 12th century, Europe saw an increased number of churches. At this time, you'll see huge sculptures over doorways of churches and also inside the churches. Now, the church where this artwork was displayed was inside the Cathedral of Atul. Now, pilgrims would come and travel all around Europe to come see the relics that were there. Now, these relics, which were the bones of Lazarus, were believed that they can heal the sick and even reduce your time in hell if you came and paid your respects. The Cathedral of Atum was specifically built to house these relics. Now, Lazarus was the brother of Mary Magdalene, who Christ brought back to life according to the New Testament. So basically, it's like a kind of hope at the death or a rebirth of some sort, which is what the sculpture of the Last Judgment portrays. Now, this sculpture was crafted by Gilza Burtis. Um, from what I could find about Gilza Burtis, uh, he worked at a monastery, and he was likely the assistant to the chief of the monastery. Um, Gilza Burtis was taught about Jesus and his compassion and love for others. And you can kind of see all this in his artwork. Um, after his training, he set off to Venuela, where he uh, crafted the tapenum above the portico. Um, as you see, the sculpture is right in front of the doorway, and it actually tells a story. Because you have to remember that back then, people couldn't read. So the only way that they'll be able to learn something was through art. So art told a story for those who were illiterate. Um, and this was telling a story of the last days or the last judgment. So um, as you can see, like the first thing your eyes glance at or the first thing that catches your eye is Christ. Uh, now, the first thing you'll notice is Christ, like I said, and he is in the center, and he is the biggest figure on the sculpture, which will mean he's the most important. His body is also symmetrical, which shows he's a divine spirit or holy. Uh, he sits on a throne, which is supposed to be the city of heaven. So it's like you can kind of see the little arch windows behind him. Now, it's also two angels on the side of, I mean, there are four angels on the side of him, two at the top and two at the bottom. Uh, to me, it seems like the two at the top are ushering him while the two at the bottom are holding him up. On the left of Christ are the damned that's going to hell, and on the right of Christ are the holy or blessed that's going to heaven. And these souls are represented as nude and like on the top right, you can see the Virgin Mary sitting on the throne. Oh, also next to Mary is an angel, and that angel has a trumpet in his hand, and it's really blowing the trumpet which um, wakes up the dead, and also announce the coming of Christ. And right below Mary, you can kind of see a representation of heaven, and you see angels lifting um, goes up into heaven and saving them. So if we switch gears and go to the other side, you can actually see Saint Michael, and he was an angel, and he's the angel um, that's weighing the souls. And you can kind of see the demons trying to tip the scale over so they can get more people into hell. Uh, if you pay attention to Michael's feet, you can kind of see like these two little figures hiding behind his robes. And they might be scared of the three-headed snake that's wrapped around the demon's leg across from them. And even if you uh, move your attention more um, towards the demon side, uh, you can kind of see the uh, demon lifting up the souls into hell with the hook by their neck. So it's like he's snatching them up for all of eternity. 
Now, if you're looking at the bottom row of the sculpture, you see uh, souls that were just resurrected from the dead. And these souls are actually standing on top of their coffin. Now, it seems like they're all in line waiting to get judged. And on the left side, you can kind of see an angel come down and just take somebody out of line and ascends them to heaven. And on the other side, you can see like these souls and they look terrified and scared. And you see an angel with a sword in his hand and he's, he's pushing these souls in a certain direction as if he's telling them that you're not coming to heaven. Um, you can also see like these hands, which probably are like the hands of a demon coming down and, and pulling the soul by his neck, which is obviously terrifying the other ones because everybody down there looks so hopeless and, and lifeless and just, just straight terrified. So there are also some words written on the sculpture in Latin. And uh, the translation of those, well, of this certain phrase right here is, May the terror terrify those whom earthly error bind. For the horror of these images here in this manner truly depicts what will be. So it basically translates and saying that this is what's really going to happen. So whose side are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the good side or the bad side? So, I mean, when you really think about it, it's, 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 it's really frightening at times. This is also something else that he had wrote in Latin. And um, it translates to Giza Bertus made this. Um, it was odd because... Back in that day, artists were craftsmen and actually not seen for like the individual work that they did. So it was kind of um, odd that his work was signed. And actually, uh, there's been talk that Gilbertus is not the person, well, Gizelbertus is not the person that actually made this art. Um, he was actually a duke who brought the bones of Lazarus to Atone. So, I mean, as of right now, we don't know who made it, but the, the message that it sends out is still amazing. This artwork, to me, is just amazing. Um, it really had me open my mind and think about really uh like you said what side you want to be on um i'm really kind of a religious person and so i felt like this artwork could really you know it would really speak to me or i could really connect to it on um a better level uh at the end of the day it's it's also terrifying uh, especially uh those words that i that he put on there in Latin saying this is what's to be. I mean, it's hard to really imagine demons and and angels and just, you know, to me it's just chaotic. And it's, it's real life kind of, it's like real life kind of scary at the end of the day. I really don't know who created this, but I'm really glad that they did because, you know, like it, it tells a story and it can, it can really uh, make people aware of, of what's to come. Um, I really wish that I could have had more information on Gilles of uh, It was kind of pretty, it was pretty hard to find. So, you know, that's that's also another reason why I personally don't think he created this artwork. Um, I can't even find a picture of his face, but still the message, the power, um, just 
the effect that this piece has is incredible. And, you know, I'm really glad that I was able to really sit down and analyze uh, artwork for the first time.